Train the muscles, not the joints. Welcome back to Natural Goal and Bodybuilding. Mountain. Today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about fitness gurus and a commonality that all fake fitness gurus tend to share. I, I could totally sell those. Exercise leaves available only at naturalgalantbodybuilding.com. A lot of times I'll share information on this channel based on some of the experiences I've had over 35 years in the gym, uh, on and off competitive, you know, as far as sometimes I was competing, sometimes I was playing other sports and so forth, or injuring myself in hockey and stuff, right? But in the end, I'm sharing some interesting discoveries that I found along the way that weren't being talked about. Not, not openly and, and really the reason why is because these things were very subtle and most people weren't aware enough to recognize that these variables mattered. Now the one thing that I found that all the fake fitness gurus have in common is that they'll nail down all results and all like muscular gains or fat loss down to one variable instead of looking at numerous variables and how the synergy works, meaning how do they work together? And is this one principle they're talking about really the only one responsible or are the results a culmination of multiple variables that are working in the proper direction? Oh great majestic rock, please grant your wisdom to me. I must know the secrets of natural bodybuilding and health. What was that? He says he can't answer right now because he's stoned. Now we all know that life is more complicated than just one simple rule. We know that if you take two people, not only will they move differently, You know, if you look at them run, they'll have a different type of stride. We know that from our discussions on this channel that each person will perform exercises differently and experience the tensions in a different way, right? Everybody will experience the bench press in subtly different ways. Maybe not entirely, like they're not using their legs to, to lift the weight, but at the same time, they may notice more delt involvement than say a chest development, or maybe they notice more chest than somebody else. Maybe somebody else is getting more tricep regardless of how they shift the weight around. So what we're talking about here is the law of individuality as a factor that is relevant, right? And whenever I talk about diet, it seems like there's always these people, and, and we see them all over the internet now. We've got the crazy freaking fanatics. They're all a part of different cults. Yeah, you think you're tough? Tough enough not to be lunch? How about you, you tough? Oh, look at you, you're coming right at me, eh? That, that one in the middle, he's tough. Hey, you're a tough guy? Are you a tough guy? And I'm not pissing on their individual choices because they may be onto something when it comes down to finding what works for their body. But when you say that your individual choice is primarily responsible for every single result in the body, my warning bells go off a bit, right? Like we have the vegetarians, we have the carnivores, we have the ketos, we have, you know, we have a lot of people that talk about diet in a certain way. And the thing that gets me the most is this thing. Calories in, calories out, that's all it is. It's really that simple. It's about the dumbest comment. It is, is absolutely the dumbest comment anybody could make when it comes down to fitness. Because when they say all that matters is calories in, calories out, then, then just eat a bag of sugar a day for your primary requirement of calories and see how well you recover and see what type of physique you get, right? And then these same people will say, oh, that's crazy, that's ludicrous, that's not what I'm talking about. Well, well no, but, but this is what you're talking about because you're saying it's only calories in, calories out. So what I'm going to say is that calories are one part of the whole equation. 
but they're not the entire picture. And I guarantee you, there have been studies that have shown that people with just maintenance calories in their diet have been able to put on muscle. There's this fallacy that says that you have to have a massive amount of extra energy and put on massive amounts of body fat in order to put on muscle, and that's not true. That's not true, you just need to feed the body the right nutrients so that it can recover, meaning enough protein enough essential fats, enough carbohydrates. Enough doesn't mean putting on body fat. That is more than you need. Do you understand? So the problem is, is that people are mixing up my message. They're saying that it's all calories in, calories out. But no, it's not. It's about feeding the muscles primarily and not feeding the fat stores. And yes, there is a type of nutrition that feeds the muscles dominantly, and then there's a type of nutrition that feeds the fat stores dominantly. And of course, there will be subtle variations for dietary choices from one person to the next, depending on what they have going on with their, their metabolism, such as their thyroid, what's going on with their, their blood sugar, right? Like say they're naturally more diabetic, they're gonna have to be much more conscious of the, the carbohydrate decisions they make, you see? So we know that if you take a person that's mildly diabetic and a person that's not, they could eat the same foods and have a totally different effect. Right? So you cannot just say calories in, calories out is, is, is all that you should learn when it comes down to putting on muscle. Now the funny thing is, is that when I was dieting for competitions back in the day, I would eat like garbage. Like especially the first competition I ever went to, I, I would eat like garbage in the outside of the year. I would eat Doritos and I would eat like ice cream and go to McDonald's and all this stuff. So my calories were probably at least 500 or more higher than when I started dieting for my competition. But you know what happened when I dieted for my competition? I lost about five pounds of, of weight, but I put on muscle. I actually looked like I ballooned up because I was feeding the muscles carbohydrates and protein, creating that positive nitrogen balance and so forth, and the pumpy and lumpy look. I was stabilizing the blood sugar, so I was absorbing more of the nutrients, and then I was dropping body fat and water. So. To say that you cannot put on muscle and lose fat at the same time would be false. And if you want to get really technical about it, say that you're at 10% body fat and you put on you know, 10 pounds of muscle, but you don't put on any extra fat. Well, guess what? Because you went up 10 pounds of body weight, now that same amount of fat mass is worth a smaller percentage of your body, which would mean a lower body fat percentage, right? So just from that alone, you will have the illusion of less fat and you will have an increased metabolism that will eventually skim off the fat to a point. Now, the stipulation in all this, or the exception is, once you get down to super lean body fat levels, then somebody might be able to say, yes, you have to lower down the food in order to dip into those uh, really low body fat percentages because the body really resists at a certain level. But to say a person with an average metabolism can't get down to 10 or 11% body fat and still put on muscle at the same time, that would be false, right? But of course, there's always a, a, a point of diminishing return where you have to specialize when you wanna to get to really lean body fat levels. So say you're trying to get down to 5% or 6%. Yes, at that point, maybe then you need to start lowering down the food, but it's not just calories in, calories out, right? You would be trying to get in a lot of protein at that point, but lower amounts of carbs and lower amounts of fat. You wouldn't just be dropping calories just randomly because in order to maintain more muscle mass, you'd have to increase that protein, right? But the point is that there are multiple variables responsible for overall fat loss, and, and it doesn't boil down to just one factor. It boils down to multiple factors when it comes down to putting on muscle or losing fat. And at the same time, some parts or variables become more important depending on what point you are in the fat loss journey or in the muscle gain journey. You know, that there'll be a, a point of more priority on more food when you're trying to put on muscle. And there'll be more priority on a certain amount of food restriction when you're losing body fat. But again, it's going to boil down to multiple factors such as, you know, protein intake, essential fats, carbohydrates, and, and this sort of thing, because each of these macros affect the body in certain ways. And it's not just about calories in, calories out. Another thing is exercise technique. A lot of the fitness gurus out there, and it depends on who I talk to on the internet, right? It, it depends on which troll I'm talking to will depend on which person they've decided to worship, right? One person uh, says that intensity is the only thing that matters for putting on muscle mass. One person will say that. 
Another person will say frequency is the only thing that matters for putting on muscle mass. And then another person will say volume is the only thing that matters. But we all know, any of us advanced guys and girls, you know, know that it's a combination of these three things. And depending on your constitution will depend on how you should mix these factors or variables up in order to get the most out of your training. But anybody that says that it's, oh, it's just intensity or it's just volume, it's just that you're going to find all sorts of exceptions to that rule. And you're going to find out that certain people didn't respond to that type of training at all when they just paid attention to this one factor as the holy grail. So my whole point is, is that you are not so black and white. You're, you're, you're a bit gray area. There, there's a certain amount of variables that you have to play around with in order to get the elite result and of course when you're a newbie you'll get results almost from anything but as you get more and more advanced then you may feel the need to refine uh, the volume the frequency the intensities of the weight and 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 so forth so it's not always quite so simple as some of these people that oversimplify things but the reason why these gurus exist is because branding is this this elephant in the room now so they're all trying to brand themselves and it happened back in the day too where they're just trying to brand themselves so people know oh that guy's that guy's the hit method guy or, and that guy's the volume guy and this guy's the frequency guy so they're basically trying to brand themselves but remember although there might be some truth to what they're saying it doesn't mean it's a whole truth to what's going on inside you and your body right so yeah i'm here as a guy just trying to help you find out what that is and yeah there are some general rules to be true Right? There are some general rules to be true, but how you apply them might have some subtle differences as opposed to how your workout partner or somebody else you know in the gym will have to apply those same variables, right? So yeah, just remember that. And on another note, one of you guys tried to return one of the exercise sticks and you wanted a discount. I, you know what? I'm sorry, mate. If, if you break the stick and then you send it back to me for a refund, sorry, it's, it's not, uh, you know, th that's not going to fly with me, okay? I'm just saying, just because you got so strong from using my workout programs doesn't mean that I'm going to return the premium exercise equipment that you've, you've learned to... Like I said, I, sometimes you just get too strong and the, the, the equipment breaks. What do you want me to do about it, right? What do you want me to do? T tell you what, tell you what, I'm a good guy. I'm a good guy. I'll send you some extra wind that you can breathe free of charge. Just, just... Breathe right now, and uh, that is sent to you compliments of naturalgallantbodybuilding.com. Mountain. So thanks a lot for watching. If you need to get a hold of me, just go to naturalgallantbodybuilding.com, and thanks to the Patreon supporters, and take care for now.